Yo, what is going on guys? This is Vessor Loki. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to play Loki solo in Loki ADC, build-wise of course, not actual gameplay. So it's been a while. Um, if you guys are wondering why I did not make a video any sooner, it's because I need more information. I just need to get to know Season 5 more, right? Um, I'm still not necessarily confident, which is why I'm only doing solo and ADC builds. Um... And before I do, I'm going to answer some questions such as, uh, is Loki solo back? Or what about Transcendence, the changes on that? And, uh, you know, just how about Loki jungle? Because obviously in Season 4, um, Loki jungle was like the only viable role um, for Loki. So, I'm not going to talk about jungle because of the fact that I don't know everything about the jungle, and it's pretty broken right now with the starters. Uh, Sir Ket is a huge factor um, why I just stopped playing Loki jungle. Uh, also, Assassin's Blessing doesn't apply to decoy, so it just wasn't that... It's not efficient. Um, so I definitely strongly advise um, Loki ADC or Solo, but I will... Um, in this video, I'm going to be contradicting myself, of course, uh, playing de kind of devil's advocate, like a pros and cons. I'm trying to keep things more impartial. So let's get started. Just a quick note, um, something I left out. I'm going to get questions about mages' blessings um, or blessing. This is not a good item on Loki. Why? Because it doesn't apply to your decoy. And it's just, it's not, it's just why. You don't need mana if you're going to get Talarias or Trance or Hydra's Lament. I mean, it's nice, but if you're just going to be pressing too, you won't, you don't need mana. Um, you, you'll be fine. If you're going to go aggressive, like I'm talking about like going really aggressive, you can go for it, but it's not recommended. Because think about this, right? Assuming that you're in Diamond and Masters, do you really want to go aggressive? Because if you go aggressive against someone, and if you fail, do you know how much of a punishment that is? It's not worth it. It's just, it's not worth it. So I don't recommend Mage's Blessing on Loki. It doesn't feel strong, and I tried it before. I, I don't like it. Um, again, that is my opinion, but the facts is, it does not apply to your decoy, and if you go aggressive with this item and succeed, congratulations. If not, you're going to suffer deeply. And you're just going to be pressing two half the game. So, yeah. And Assassin's Blessing, of course, for the jungler. But I'm not discussing about the jungler jungling role. And everything else, you're a troll. I mean, if you go attack speed low-key, get Hunter's Blessing. And that's about it. All right. So, let's start with solo first. So, solo lane. <laughs> so, let's talk about trance, actually, right? Um, actually, no, let's not. I'm just going to tell you exactly why. I'm just going to show you the build and I'm going to tell you why. I think it's a better way of doing it. So for solo lane, uh, you want to get tier 2 boots and then you want to get um, a health chalice. And then you want to get the remainder of mana pots. If you have remaining gold, just save it. But you just generally want to have... Tier 2 Boots, Chalice of Healing, and then Mana Pots. I would say like 2, or yeah, just, just 2. Um, and save everything else if you have spare cash. Now, let me explain why I get Tier 2 Boots. Um, the reason why you want to get Tier 2 Boots in Soul Lane is mainly because if you look at the map right here, you can obviously tell that Okay, so this is a soul lane on the right side here. Let me ask you a... Why do you think... Because you guys remember Season 2 when you um, buy Teleport to Towers? Um, so since that's no longer really a thing right now, as, as for now, like I don't know. Um, this is a short lane. Because the towers are closer to each other, which means the minions are going to be... F faster going to be in your tower because, you know, it, because of the towers are closer. So when you back, you're going to miss a wave or you're going to lose gold experience. And to minimize this punishment, um, you generally want to get there faster. Now, obviously, Loki has a slight advantage when it comes to walking to, um, to this tower because, he, because you're supposed to stealth um, out of fountain. So stealth, you get your mana back because of the fountain and you just move faster and stealth again and then you're at your tier 2 tower. Um, but I want to get there faster. So the reason why you want to rush boots here 
and there's actually another reason I'll get to that is so you can get what's it called Talari boots now <laughs> Crazy, right? But it's actually 25% movement speed, and you get an additional 20% movement speed when you walk out of found for 7 seconds, plus vanish, which makes you move faster by 35%. So it's just kind of 75% movement speed. I'm assuming if my math is correct here, because I'm not too sure if it's adds together necessarily. Um, I know items uh, do, do, but I'm not too sure about abilities. Uh, so if I had Heart Seeker here plus Talari Boots, I would have total 35% movement speed from my base value. Um, so Talari Boots to get there faster. N nonetheless, you're going to have 45% bonus movement speed when you move out of base for 7 seconds. And this will get to your tower really fast, so you don't really need it. Uh, teleport. And uh, hopefully it's not a thing, because I hate Teleport. It's a waste of an active uh, for light game. Unless you're a backdoor. But backdoor kind of sucks right now. So... After that, you want to get uh, uh, Trance. Now, <laughs> I have not said this before, but Trance can be viable, and it depends. Uh, this is very. This is going to be a very confusing guide, and I apologize for that, but there's generally going to be two builds for Loki, and I've done the math, actually. Uh, allow me to show you here. There we go. Okay, so I've done the math. I made a program um, that calculates all the, you know protections and then the damage and stuff like that for me so i just got to input the, the the damage and the defense and does everything for me and i've made a few different builds to see how it all worked out with a damage wise um keep in mind that the high uh just because it deals a lot of damage doesn't necessarily mean it's necessary as you can tell last season i had only around 180 to 200 power with my build um and i still did really well it's because uh i focus more on utility over um power because loki already deals enough damage so it's not it's kind of just redundant um or it's not necessary to have so much power um that just makes you kind of a more of a one trick pony so generally, you want to have high cooldown reduction, more than thirty percent, and you want to have good, uh, you want to have good flat pen, like around twenty plus, and then have at least Titan's Bane, uh, depending on the enemy, of course. So what's really cool about this season is it's more or less um, counter building, which is why there's two builds for Loki, kind of three actually, <laughs> three builds, um, and I'll explain this uh, as I go. So, Talaria Boots and Transcendence, the reason why you want to get Transcendence second item is because in solo lane, you're going to be farming. Um, and actually, one more note here, this is a very important, so listen up. Another reason why you want to rush Boots is because you want to rotate faster. I don't want you guys to sit in lane and press your 2 and just be a bot for the entire game. That is not how I want um, us to represent Loki, um, because that is how he is currently being re represented uh, as. So getting Tilari boots not only gets you to your tower faster, but you're faster than every single character in the game, uh, not including the jungler with the speed buff. So it just allows you to rotate from solo to mid. Um, and that's all I ask for you guys is to rotate more. Once you clear the wave, um, rotate. Don't just stand there. See if you can um, uh, clear the wave, go behind, proxy the wave, and then rotate because that gives you more time. Or at really desperate measures, if your team really needs you, give up your own tower so you have more of a window of opportunity to rotate. Though that's like the last resort decision. Um, so Transcendence here is to make up the lack of power you get from Talaria Boots. And then again, the ideal here is to rotate faster and it's just to, and it gets your lane faster. You won't be dealing much damage because it's only 10 power, but that's because, uh, or thanks to Transcendence, that will kind of make up for the lack of 30 power compared to Warrior's Tommy. And it gives you MP5 too, so you, you, know, you will lose less mana. It's, it's always a good thing, right? And Transcendence gives you, uh, again, around 100 power, but that's only to, when, when you reach level 20 is when it gives you a, a 100 power, assuming you have full stacks, but of course you have full stacks by level 20. So this item, I haven't done the math, but it shouldn't give you that much power early on, uh, but still 35 plus, you know, you'll have 40, five, uh, you'll have five more power uh, if, you ha if, you, if you were to have only uh, Warrior Tabi, if these two com were combined. But then as you stack, because solo lane is a stacking lane, basically, you just do nothing but take farm and try to uh, kill the wave as fast as possible. That's basically how solo lane works. I think that's actually how every lane works. Um, 
And then for third item here, you want to get Hydra's Lament. Uh, this is just for the more, more cooldown. But you can, again, you can be very flexible with your build. Um, you can get, for example, if, you, if you're ahead, you don't have to get Hydra's Lament. Uh, you can get, obviously, Heartseeker, because Heartseeker is a huge bonus with Transcendence. The more power you have, the stronger Heartseeker is. Um, but of course, generally you want to get Hydra's Limit because of the passive, and of course the cooldown is very nice. So you have a 20% 20, 20 cooldown uh, with just these three items here. Alright, so damage uh, next. I said damage. Um, where's Heartseeker? Goodness sakes. Heartseeker. Next, obviously, Heartseeker. <laughs> because it's, again, it just complements. Transcendence is... Here's the thing. When you build Transcendence, you want to have a build that revolves around that item. You don't want to have Transcendence and then just nothing that really backs up Transcendence. Like, not support Transcendence, Transcendence but works a way around with it. Um, since Transcendence has high power, this complements Talari's lack of power and helps your Hydra's Laments passive because... Power increases your basic attack all by a lot. If we just go by here, 86 to 137. And that's not even fully stacked. Because uh, for some reason it doesn't calculate that. Um, at least I don't think it does. If it does, correct me. And that just complements Hydra's passive. So Transcendence helps Talari Boots. Heartseeker and Hydra's Lament benefit off of Transcendence. See how that works? Next item, uh, let's see here. I should just probably go to the penetration category. Penetration power, there we go. Uh, you can get Crusher. Now here is another part where you can be flexible with your build. And this actually strongly depends on the enemy team. If the enemy team is really tanky, if you're seeing squishies by building defense, which I've been seeing a lot, um, sadly, like Breastplate of Valor, Warlock, Sash combo, that's disgusting. Um... If you just see Squishy's building defense, uh, you need to get rid of Crusher. Crusher won't be useful. Um, you need to get, instead, Titan's Bane. And then last but not least, actually definitely least, I hate this item, Yon's Wrath. Um, why I hate this item? Uh, because it's like, I want the cooldown to be separated. I, Yon's Wrath doesn't have a passive, and I guess you can say its passive is 20% cooldown, but I don't like that. So that's just my opinion as a Loki perspective. I prefer for this to be more separated and spread out. Like, imagine if Heartseeker had... Uh, or imagine if Ninja Tabi... If Ninja Tabi had cooldown, I would have I would have gone Ninja Tabi instead of Warrior's Tabi because, again, I have Transcendence. I don't need that, you know... How much does... How much, uh, how much does... Uh, It's, it's a 20 power difference, but you get mana, which complements, uh-huh, complements Transcendence, gives you some power. I think it's, like, only by, what, one or two power additional, though? Uh, but still, you'll have um, one or two more power. And the attack speed, of course, it's not really relevant. But if, if Ninja Tabi gave cooldown instead of uh, attack speed, I would have picked this up uh, for Loki. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so then the last, again, Yon's Draft to have a full cooldown build. 40%. Um, Again, if the enemy is very squishy, the enemy team is very squishy, and they're not building defense, um, not including Guardian. If Guardian and a Warrior are really tanky, that's fine. You don't need Titan's Bane. Your goal, your goal is to kill the carries, not the tanks. Um, let your mages handle that. Uh, but if you, again, if your ADC is building defense, your Scylla in mid is building defense, your Anubis, whatever, the jungler is building like a lot of defense. If it's one defense, you can, you know, whatever. But if it's like a lot of defense, uh, we're talking about over 100. Actually, I would say just generally over 80, 90. Um, then I would get definitely Tyne's Bane. Its value is, it's just penetration is so good. Uh, you just need it. Uh, it's worth more than the passive. Uh, again, because if they have defense, they're going to mitigate your damage. Uh, Tyne's Bane allows you to ignore it. So yeah, this is the Sloki solo build. Uh, the, now the question might be thinking is, do you sell Talari Boots for a Warrior Tabi? You can if you want that additional uh, 30 power, if that really matters for you. But you got to keep in mind, you're losing, like, what, 7% movement speed? So in my opinion, it's not worth it. Movement speed is, I think, 7% movement speed for 30 power. I th I'll take that, especially since this makes me faster. I'll have 35% total movement speed with Heartseeker. Just going fast as Loki feels great, because you can just hold a W key, and no one can kill you unless they have, like, agility abilities as well um 
So yeah, this is the Loki Solo build. Simple as that. Uh, you know, Mount Chalice of Healing keeps you, you know, not wasting pots. Uh, of course, when you consume your mana pots, right, you should be around, like, finishing Talari or getting into Transcendence or even finish it if you're that ahead. You want to instead build, uh, get wards. Don't ever get mana potions if you have Transcendence. It doesn't make sense, especially when you have a blue buff available for you. It doesn't make sense. You cannot be getting Transcendence. It doesn't matter. You should not get mana pots after, the, uh, after your uh, first back. Uh, so yeah, wards, OP. Like I'm chat. I'm there, guys. Well, you guys are uh, my viewers, but just listen to me. Wards are strong. If you get two wards, ward um, here. Let me show you on the map. You want to ward here, like generally uh, around here or here or here. I would put it like in between the blue buffs. Put one here and put one here. Um, because this makes it where if the enemy jungler comes through any of these paths, they will be, well, it'll, it'll tell you, and same for this. They can't go through the fire giants. I mean, they can jump over the fire giant. If they know you have wards here, then you're pretty much screwed. But then, like, that's an uh, unlikely outcome. And plus, you can hear, you can generally hear the leap. So it, it doesn't really matter. I think you can jump over it. If not, then my apologies. Um, but yeah, so wards, super, super important. All right. Let's go on to ADC. Now there's two... Uh, here's the confusing part. So let me show you the... All right, so back to this again. And I know it was constantly there. Um, I'm not going to show you everything. Here, I'm going to scroll once. And you guys can pause if you want to see it. But I'm not going to completely um, go through all of it. But the particular, the, the one I really want to go over, well, though, is this one right here. This one is basically, if you're thinking about t too high damage and then too low damage, this is basically right dead set in the middle, has everything you kind of need. Um, and it's also really cheap. There's no trance. So the build is uh, Talaria's or Warrior's Tabi, Yon's Wrath, Hydra Crusher, Tynes, and Heartseeker. This is the ultimate penetration kind of um build with like still as you can tell i mean it speaks right here so total damage so let me explain this to you aim strike with this entire build will deal 405 unmitigated damage now if someone has okay i don't uh if someone has 65 physical protections plus pen from this then they will take a total of 347 damage from your aim strike alone. Basic attack, because, you know, basic attack goes with aim strike, plus hydras, uh, it's 379 unmitigated damage. With someone who has 65 uh, protections, um, with the amount of pen you have added to that, will take 327 damage. So in total, with, with only aim striking one auto attack, you will deal 671 damage to someone who has exactly 65 physical defense. With Heart Seeker, you'll deal 159. And if you add these two together, you'll deal a total of 831 damage. 31? 830 damage with just aims with one auto attack and one ability usage. Crazy. Now, if the enemy has 175 protections, let, let, it's, it'll be a different story now. Now, as you can see, this is 20% ignored pen because it's exactly what you'll ignore at someone who has 65 protections. Anything more will change the value. Um, and if someone has a... And, uh, I can't talk today. I'm sorry. And now we're going to be doing 175 protection, which is the highest amount, which is 40% ignored pen. And 35 flat as well included. Don't forget that. So aim strike through 405. Same thing as this, right? Same build, same build. Just against a tankier target. Uh, unmitigated damage to someone with 175 physical protections will take 239 damage. As you can tell, that's a pretty significant. So that's almost that's around 100 less damage. Uh, basic attack with hydras will deal 379. Same thing as this. And against someone who has 175 physical defense will take 223 damage. That means a total of 462 damage with your aim strike and auto attack included. With hard seeker, it's 571. So. All in all, and I checked over the other builds. Uh, this would be the Hydra's build, but as you can see, this one has z this does, this one does not have Titan's Bane. So let me show you how terrible it is to not buy Titan's Bane. Actually, this is a great example. So this build is perfect, except against tanks. 
35 flat pen, no percentage, uh, 35% movement speed, 40% CDR. I uh, hope I didn't mess that up. Okay. Aim strike will deal 473 but I'm pretty sure that goes rounds down, and it just deals 473 damage. Um, and someone who has 65 protections will take 665 damage. Your basic attack will deal this much, and against that uh, protection, you'll deal 366. Total, 731. Heart Seeker deals 195, and in total, 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 is 926 damage with one auto attack, including Aim Strike, Hydras, and Heart Seeker. Yes, Loki's one auto attack can deal 1,000 damage to you. Alright, so now, same build, but let's go against a tanky target. So, 473 against that will deal only 200 damage. That's 160-ish less damage right there. That's a huge difference. And the basic attack will go from 478 to 198. Because it's 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 the same. Uh, this one is like point something, but it's rounded down. So it's, it's the same thing. So you only deal 400 damage with one auto attack. With hard secrets, 502. So... If you compare this build, right, like obviously like this build deals 100 more damage than the one I was just talking about, 830, but it deals 100 less damage, I, it's 70 to be fair, against someone who's tanky compared to this one. This is 7571, this is 502. So you get to decide here. It's the same stats, just penetration is different, and, and except for the fact that this is 30% cooldown. You can have a choice here. You can obviously just don't care and you say, okay, I'll deal 70 less damage. I don't care. Or um, I'd rather, you know, just have that. It's perfectly fine. That's why I'm saying these are the two builds that you would want to go for. This or this. Everything else, it, it's, it was just for testing and it didn't turn out well at all. Like this one or your total damage without Heartseeker, 500. Yeah, that's funny. Um, so yeah, those are the two builds you ideally want to go with. And uh, the one I currently showed you was, I believe, this. Talaria, Trans, Hydra's Crusher, Yone's Heartseeker. Yeah. Um, and again, you can sell Crusher uh, for Tynesbane, or you can sell Yone's Wrath for Tynesbane, but do not sell Heartseeker or Hydra's uh, when you have Trans because they complement each other. Anyway, <laughs> back to ADC. Did I bore you guys already? If you're still watching this, type... Loki is the best god in Paragon. All right, so ADC. <laughs> so you can again, you can choose to get Tier Two Trance if you want, but in my opinion, um, I would want to get Warrior's Tabi, not Talaria Boots. Why? Because the lane is longer, so you have more of a window opportunity to get back into your lane before the minions, because the minions clash right here, right in the dead center. You have time. Like, basically, one solo lane time uh, to go to your tower to kill minions. So, I do not get Talaria Boots, because it's not needed. And since you're ADC, you don't necessarily rotate that much. So you still rotate to mid, don't get me wrong here. Um, I'm not saying don't rotate it to mid. But ideally, I prefer to get that additional 30 damage, so I can just kill the Hunter. Because in solo lane, you're fighting against a Warrior or a Chang'a, right? Good luck killing them. So I'd rather just play safe and get Talaria in solo and just rotate. And then in AEC, I want to be on the aggressive side. After Warriors Tavi, you can get Transcendence, but let's choose a different build because then I'll just then it just repeats to the same build, right? Uh, so this is the other build, which would be get Hydra's Lament. Where's Hydra's? Um, Hydra's Lament into now, you, now. This is where it can get more flexible. You can obviously get Yon's Wrath, or you can get right afterwards Heartseeker. So, you can get Yonzra 3rd or Heartseeker 3rd, it's your choice, but technically doesn't make sense because you you don't have much power. I mean, 30, you only have 80 power, and that's 80. I mean, 80 more damage, sure, that's like close enough to 100. But uh, you can get Yonzra. It's actually 50, it's the same price, so <laughs> it doesn't matter. So I would just get Yonzra. Uh, maximize that cooldown and spam that Hunter to death. Afterwards, you want to get Crusher or Heartseeker. You can get Heartseeker really anytime after Hydra's Lament. Keep that in mind. So I want to get Crusher next because 
I'm not really focusing again too much on mobility. Uh, I just want to kill the hunter. That's my goal. Because the longer I give the hunter to farm, the faster he's going to get his crits online. And this is one of the reasons why I don't think Loki ADC will work anymore. Is because of the fact that crit meta is, a, is basically here. And uh, a crit ranged carry versus Loki close range. I don't know about you, but I would much rather have a hunter who has crit than a Loki that can kill one person if he gets close enough. I don't know. It's a huge if. But then again, you can say the same thing, like, if the person land his autos, right? But in Loki's case, you don't need to worry about landing your autos necessarily. So, yeah, pros and cons, right? So Crusher next, uh, just the more damage. Though, it again... There's no trance to really back this up, but it's fine. You're just going for the penetration, the power, and the extra passive is just like a, a it's it's nice. Right afterwards, you want to get uh oh, where's Heartseeker? <laughs> Heartseeker, right. That's the next item. And actually I forgot what the last item is. Excuse me for that. What is the last item? Oh time duh, time spain. Um Time Spain. There we go. Again. I'm going to repeat myself because this, I want to get this to be repetitive for you. You can be flexible. You don't have to have a build order. Obviously, you shouldn't build Tyne's Vein first item, though. Like, come on, have some common sense. But you want to get Boots, Hydras, and then afterwards, you can just generally you can swap these around. You can get Yon's Wrath last. You can get a third item. Or you can get, it just, you can put this anywhere. It all depends on the enemy. Just because you went Hydras into Yon's and then Crusher... And then didn't get Heartseeker or Tynesbane, and you did really well, doesn't mean it's going to happen again the next game. You guys got to keep that in mind. Stop being bots. And I'm being honest. So if you have Hydra's Lament, and then you, and then you, like, the enemy jungler is camping you, and he's very fast, and you just can't get away, you want to get Heartseeker for that mobility. Or if you if you are on top of the enemy hunter, you want to get cooldown so you can just keep spamming him over and over and over. Or if you're so far ahead, you can just get crush your third item and just be like, hey, more damage, right? Who cares? Or, 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 if for some reason the hunter started building defense early on, or you're just so far behind, you just don't know what to do with your life, you should get Titan's main third or fourth item. Generally, if you see people build defense on squishies, build Titan's main. That's basically how it goes. Even one defense item, like let's hear, let's get a breastplate here. So what's my physical? I have 69 physical protections. That's a very appropriate number for this god, right? And then, boom, 134. If you say, oh, it's just one defense. It doesn't matter. It does matter. <laughs> it does matter. That's like 40, that's 40 uh, protections away. Um, or 36 if you're going to be a smart one. 36 protections away from 170 per, uh, physical protections, which I think is the max. Or is it 175? Okay. Whatever, close enough. So, it does matter. With 134, I think they'll have around 30... You'll have above 30% penetration against... Uh, ignored penetration against the enemy target. So, it is a huge difference. So, don't tell me, oh, it's just one defense, it doesn't matter. Now, if it's Shifter Shield, that's a different story. If it's Shifter Shield, um, what's its thing? 35... Okay, it's just 15 protections in the beginning. Okay, see now that you can say it doesn't really matter And once they reach below health, I mean just kill them <laughs> um, But you're not gonna get times main just for you know, it's, it's not worth it But again if they build defense build times main simple as that, you know, don't make it complicated uh, Let me just quickly go back to I forgot to come something completely So if you start with tier 2 boots, you want to get the same thing chalice mana pots and then wards. Wards, wards, wards. Um, if you get transfers, I mean, it's, it's, then it's going to be the same thing as the old Season 2 build. If you get trans, you just go boots, or you can go Talaria. You can go Talaria if you get trans. Do not get Talaria if you're not getting trans. Because um, that's just... You're losing a lot of power because this build and this build already doesn't have that much power. Let's see, it should have like 180, 175. I don't know. 
Okay, 210 for some reason. I don't know why. Because my math wasn't right. But still, okay, so 210 versus almost 300 power with trance, right? Um, if you could, Oh, that's why. If you remove this and then you get Talari, I was like saying, that's not right. Um, you're going to have... Uh, there we go. 185, yep. I was about to say, like, what? That's not right. 210? That's too high. But yeah, it's 185 if you get Talaria boots. So I wouldn't recommend it. You can if you want. If you want movement speed, don't be afraid to lose a bit of power. Don't think Loki... Yeah, sure, he's mostly just build pure damage, right? But you gotta work a way around this. Now, if you're, like, in gold, silver, or platinum, um, anything just below those ranks, you can just really get away with anything. You can build crit Loki. I built... Attack speed and crit Loki in Diamond and Masters level. Not to, not to say that that really matters, because we all know how terrible matchmaking is. So I could have been playing against really bad players, or really good players, or just have a really good team. Um, but I was more or less trolling, and I still went positive, still did really well, and we won. I've never lost as Loki with a troll build before. At least I don't think I did. It's it's funny how I win more when I troll versus playing seriously. Like, I play Loki support and I still win. I have no idea why. Uh, maybe Loki support is the role. Actually, I'm going to try Loki support, FYI. Because, I mean, just have a warrior solo, guardian jungle, or vice versa, and then go Loki support. You can help... Uh, Decoy is very powerful with setting up, so it's just pretty much free, right? In dual lane. Anyway, if you go trance, you should just go with the normal build. You should have 300 gold left if you buy tier 2 trance, right? So let's clear this. If you get... Uh, this is still for ADC. Keep this in mind. Because um, I know I'm rambling on, but I just want to get as much information as possible. Uh, so then, yeah, you just want to get 3 health, 3 mana, and you're good to go. The downside of doing this is that you're, move you're going to move really slow... Um, you're not going to have Chalice, so you're going to keep spending money, 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 and just, it's not worth it. Tier 2 Trance is not a good starter. You want to get Boots. Uh, tier 2 Boots, and then get, uh, yeah, yeah, a good starter. Get Warrior's Tobby right off the bat. Um, but just get Combat Boots, Chalice, Mana, easy. Just play safe until you reach around level 7, and then you can go Loki on people. So anyway, that's going about it, guys. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, Please, please post it down below because I do read them if they are legitimate and they're not repetitive. If I answer something in the video and then you just ask the question again, I'm just not. I'm gonna ignore you. And if it's a troll question or if it's grammatically incorrect, like if it's too, if it just doesn't make sense, I'm not gonna reply. Um, just if you have a question that I did not cover in this video, feel free to put that down below. And I'm gonna see you guys all Loki and non-Loki players next time.